Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'm gonna to show you an old school pocket survival kit. Stay tuned. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and push that like button. That helps us get the video out to more viewers. Also, you can check out our great Waypoint Survival merchandise like this hoodie and other items in the spring link down below. And then also, we teach survival and bushcraft classes here at the Waypoint Survival School. Our classes start up again in April. You can find more information about that at www.waypointsurvival.com. Before we get into the contents of this can, this is a Prince Albert can. Now, I don't use tobacco, and I don't recommend anyone else uses it, but this is a very old can. Sold these for many years. You can find these at secondhand stores and at flea markets, yard sales, and things like that. And so, uh, if you want, you can spray paint this or cover this with duct tape. But I wanted to show you this so that you could see what the can actually looks like. And this one's in really good shape. So, again, if you look around, you can find this. You put your thumbs on either side. It has a little tab here where it says push up. So you do that to open it. And we have some items inside. And so the first thing that I wanna show you is Boy Scout knife. It comes with multiple blades. Of course you have your, your screwdriver, flathead screwdriver, and bottle opener, can opener, knife blade, and then a nice awl for making holes in wood or leather or other projects that you might need to work on when you're out in the back country. The next item that we have is a stick with a little over a hundred feet of heavy-duty fishing line and it's split at the end so you start here wind it around ends with another split and then I've got a little split ring on the end which I can slide over top of the stick and that helps secure the fishing line and keep it intact. Next we have this small metal tin. As you can see it says aspirin and band-aid and if we open it up without spilling it here we have one large band-aid and then several aspirin. Not everybody can use aspirin. Of course this is old school and it does help prevent uh, major heart attacks from getting worse and things like that. Plus it's a good old school pain reliever. Next, we have another small metal tin, and this is our fish kit. Opening this up, we have three swivels, just brass swivels. We have 10 lead sinkers, and then 20 small number six fish hooks. You can always catch big fish with a little hook, but you can't catch a little fish with a big hook, so you want small hooks in your emergency kit. The next item we have is just a small old school bobber and this of course if we want to use uh, the line and uh, fish out with a, a stick or some kind of a pole but this kind of helps you see what's going on if you want to fish that way. Of course I have enough line and hooks to put out a trot line and in a survival situation you'd want to do that but I like to do a lot of hand fishing as well and sometimes a bobber is a lot of fun on the smaller pan fish. The next item that we have in the bottom of the can here is just a small stub of a candle. And of course this is very useful for additional light. This will burn probably 20-25 minutes and uh, you can use this as a beeswax. So you can use this for lubrication, for zippers, for the knife blade to keep it from rusting. And there's a lot of things you can use beeswax for plus again like I said additional light and you can light this and then use this to light your tinder. Gives you a little longer burn time. Last but not least, we have 18 Strike Anywhere matches with the striker inside turned inside out and folded so that it can't accidentally strike against one of the matches. It does have a waterproof stopper. This is a glass vial, and so this is going to keep my matches nice and dry, even if I fall into a creek or something. So this is pretty much it. That's how it packs back inside, and uh, our ancestors they really didn't carry a whole lot of stuff. I mean, they were a lot tougher than we are. And when you look back at the mountain men and the early frontiersmen, they went very light compared to most of us in modern times. And they relied on their skills. Uh, they would drink out of the creeks and streams, so you don't see any you know, water purification here. 
They didn't know anything about, you know, the 10 C's and all of that. They understood the concepts and the principles, of course, but they didn't really go really what we would consider gear heavy. And, and this was a, a pretty good complete pocket kit. So if you're going to go out and do some woods laundering and just afraid that you might run into, you know, an emergency overnight, most of them would be very comfortable with a kit of this size and with what was in here. Matter of fact, most would probably consider that more than adequate. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video on an old school kit based on research and study that I've done, a lot of reading uh, about old school things and what people would carry in their pockets. I've always found it fascinating because uh, I think that our ancestors were people that uh, we should learn a lot from. We can learn a lot from history and how they were able to make it even in very difficult times with a whole lot less than what we're used to. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take great survival and bushcraft training classes here at our beautiful facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.